<laughs> but I like alliteration, so it's, I thought it was just a cool, cool conference to go to. Um, I avoid the, the C word. Uh, when I first read uh, crea Creativity and Innovation, I, I, I can't remember if I wrote this or said it to somebody. To me, that's redundant. I mean, there's no way you can be creative and not innovate, or, and vice versa. I mean, if you innovate, you have to be creative. So it's a little redundant. I know it's fashionable. Um, we've been avoiding the C word for a long time because as designers, and I'm a communication designer, uh, it's often used against us. It means you creative guys. In other words, we don't take you seriously. You know, like I don't have to wear a tie because I'm creative and I can come late, which I don't ever. Um, but, you know, I'm, in other words, they don't take me seriously, but they are, therefore have little, liber li little liberties, which I actually despise. So... Um, I, uh, I avoid the C word. I've recently noticed that there's been a lot of conferences about innovation. There used to be all design conferences. There used to be about innovative design or design teaching, um, design management, uh, all about sy systemic work. And now they've all become innovation conferences. So as a designer, um, I wonder whether uh, we're in danger of being sort of overtaken by... What does this thing not work? Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. Um, there are, we have to st look at this a little more um, neutrally. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm struggling with this program which I've never used before. It's so easy. It's a Macintosh for Christ's sake. But um, it's different from what I'm used to. How, do, how come the arrow buttons don't work? Go away. There you go. No, no, they don't work. Okay. Yes, um, if you're a. For crying out loud, go away. <laughs> you got the point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charles Eames obviously doesn't want to come up. Charles Eames, you may know, has invented. Uh, this is not funny. Um, there's something automatic going. Am I on autopilot here? Oh, you got slideshow. Oh, for crying out loud! Why do I have a bloody slideshow? I don't know what a slideshow. Why do I give you a PDF if you give me automatic slideshow? <laughs> can I can I just advance them forward, or work in Acrobat? See, if this is my own computer, this wouldn't happen. Just like this. Yeah, but then you've got the screen, the, the frame on there, and that sucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. How come I can't advance my own slideshow? There's no acrobat on this one. So oh, blood. See, I should have brought my, I've got my own computer, but I'm not going to start it now. There, I spent days in confinement working on this intricate, you know, timing is everything, and um, then I get stuck with bad tools. Oh, dear. How come the others worked? Well, what was that, PowerPoint? Yes. Oh, good. See, I try to avoid Microsoft products because <laughs> I usually use Keynote, but nobody ever Keynote uses Keynote, you see, but too late. Anyway, whatever. So uh, you have to do with the fact that this is all over the place, that what happens when you're being too creative and make your own pro programs in your own software, but when I think I send you a PDF, I think that's whatever, next time. Um, Charles Eames, you get, the, you get the story. When you design furniture like Charles Eames did, you know, you want to try to not innovate because basically people's bottoms haven't changed very much in the last 50,000 years uh, or people's backs. I mean, we heard about new attempts at, at, at sitting, but you can't innovate the, the, the human being, uh, and which a lot of technology does. You know, we're supposed to have very small fingers so we can type quickly on, on uh, mobile phones, but we don't. We still have uh, large fingers. So uh, let me attempt at a, um, a few definitions as far as I'm concerned. So it's the art of introducing something new or something newly introduced. Um, the problem is innovation, as you know, is often misused um, for products that have just been introduced or products that are new entirely. So the, the differentiation I want to make between new and innovative. Uh, new things aren't necessarily innovative uh, and innovative, don't, innovative things don't have to be new. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, essentially, we can talk about new products, new processes, and new thinking. I am actually more interested in new thinking and new processes, but they're very difficult to, to describe. So I should instead just give an example of uh, products that, uh, that are new, but that they symbolize new thinking rather than um, something new. Oh, here we go. See, again. God. This is, I do apologize, the whole drama is gone. Okay, well, of course, you have to show Apple when you show this. Um, everybody knows the iPod. We've even heard it mentioned a couple of times today. No, the iPod was not, not, a, not a new product in the sense that it used technology that was available. We heard this. It had a hard drive inside, MP, MP3 um, technology. Even the, the click wheel wasn't Apple's invention. It was all there. 
what they invented or what they innovated was this, that they built a product that was actually usable. They built a great product which was desirable, as, as we heard that Jonathan Ives wanted to do something that people would actually want to use, a piece of uh, art and, and culture and entertainment, but they built the infrastructure around it. People had, as we just heard, um, ten years earlier built, a pro or eight years earlier built a product that could play MP3 cheaply and quickly and, and available, but they, they forgot where you get the stuff from. So they built a website, they built stuff that cost 99 cents, which everybody can afford. Uh, I know there is free music out there, but if you want to be legal. And they also built uh, a desirable infrastructure for, for you to go and buy the stuff. So Apple's innovation wasn't the, 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 the iPod player, uh, nor the iPhone, but the infrastructure that went around it, that it became a complete infrastructure that was even available to Windows users, which uh, a, few day, a few years earlier, would have been totally impossible to even imagine. So innovation in this, case, in this case really meant new thinking and thinking across disciplines, not just saying, uh, you know, we don't do this, we only make hardware. They make hardware and software at the same time. Uh, other people and most people um, do this the other way around. You know, the, the early adopters usually get punished by the market. Microsoft has always had a different policy. They do something later, they do it badly, uh, then they let the user be the beta tester. This is Vista, for example, which didn't work. It's actually withdrawn. I mean, I would be dead if I ever did anything like this in my business. Nobody would ever come and give me any more work. But, you know, if you're big enough, if you have the, the speed of a, and size of a tanker, I guess you can do that. Of course, they copied both the Windows and everything from Apple, which, who had it before. But that's not important. What's important is that certain companies... Um, always fall into the second category, but they're still innovative for themselves. I mean, if anybody has ever worked at Microsoft, I have, uh, to, to even enter the building is a major act. I mean, to even get in there, because you have so many security controls, because you may be a spy, you have to deliver your mobile phones, and hand in your glasses and your hearing aids, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's scary because they're so afraid of anybody walking out, there, out of there with ideas, which of course is ridiculous. Um, anything else, you walk in there with ideas and you walk out without them. But <laughs> as far as they're concerned, um, it's still incredibly innovative. And any of you who have worked in large co corporations, as I have as, a, as an outside client, uh, you know damn well that the most uh, difficult thing is really this. It's all there in a large corporation. Uh, I've worked for Hewlett Packard, I've worked for Bosch, I've worked for Daimler Benz and, and all the big car companies. And I am actually surprised they make anything. Because if you go into those meetings, there's 35 people around a table, 30 of them are outside consultants, uh, and you wonder what the, the inside people ever do, except you know, hiring consultants and pay for them. And be, but basically, we tell them what they know because we're in different meetings, and we don't have the hierarchy problem. I can be in a meeting with the engineers. I was at Nokia. I, I met the engineers, but I also met the marketing people. And they didn't talk to each other. They hated each other because they're idiots the marketing idiots, the engineering idiots, and I was the only sort of in-between idiot. Uh, who'd, I was an idiot anyway, because that's what, that's what they paid me as an outside designer. You're an idiot, you know, and you get paid to be an idiot, and then you, you, you fly home, which is fine. I don't mind being paid to be an idiot. Um, but I got them to talk to each other through me, and, uh, you know, we actually made, made some cool product. So that, to me, is, is, a, is a major challenge. Uh, you know, how do you tap into... This, this knowledge that this includes the European Commission, includes every body I've ever worked for, and I mean body in the sense of a, you know, any amount of people that, that share a, an activity. We know so much, we just have no idea where that knowledge is. Uh, it certainly isn't in databases. Um, one thing about innovation is it does happen all the time, actually. This is not the first innovation cycle. Um, well, we actually, we haven't got one. We have to wait for growth, because if, if you look at history, um, when the... Um, the Napoleonic Wars were finished uh, in, uh, you know, eight, in the 1815. 1825, the first trains, as you know, went to the Stockton Darlington Railway. And what you probably don't know, there was, um, there was a person running in front of it. We, we had that Latin bit on, this, on, his, uh, on his flag, um, which in English means this. Um, of course, you all know already because you all speak fluent Latin. <laughs> That was a great motto, the private danger is the public. In other words, people, this thing is going to kill you. It smells, it's fast, uh, it's, it, um, it is you know, in, in, intensely dangerous, but 